Number five, write a balanced molecular equation describing each of the following chemical reactions. And then we have B of the group. This one says gaseous butane, which is C4H10, reacts with diatomic oxygen gas to yield a gaseous carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay. So first, let's just focus on what a molecular equation is. A molecular equation is two things, okay? A molecular equation tells us that we have to have everything in elemental form or compound form. Basically, when we start getting into it, you're going to start seeing that some equations have charges. Like sometimes you'll see like Na plus or maybe, maybe like SO4 2 minus. Molecular equations do not have charges. They only consider their elements and the compounds, but no charges. The second thing that a molecular equation has is that you have to include the state that that compound or the elemental phase is in. Solid, liquid, gas, and if it's aqueous, sure, we could add aqueous to the, to the mix here, but generally for these types of questions, it's either going to be a solid, liquid, or a gas. Okay. Then once you have that equation, all you got to do is just balance it because remember, every single equation has to be balanced, no exceptions. So when we start getting into math, AKA stoichiometry, uh, with balanced equations, literally balance, it has to be balanced before we do any math, but we'll get there. We'll get there in time. Okay. So for this one, let's write out the equation. They told us that we had gaseous butane. So we have C4 H10. There's the compound part. I have to include the state. They told us that it was a gaseous butane. This tells me that it was a gas. Okay. Reacts with, so it's being added with, right? Reacts with is just a fancy way for saying, you know, we're adding it with diatomic oxygen. Di in chemistry means two. Atomic means atoms, right? So you have two atoms of oxygen. So C4H10 gas is being added with O2. I have two oxygens, diatomic. And I need the state. They tell me that it's a gas. So that's that guy. To yield, whenever you see a yield, that just means that you're giving the arrow now. That means that whatever this is happening, they're reacting together to form the products. So what are they going to be forming? Gaseous carbon dioxide. This is covalent uh, naming in which you call it as you see it. They said just carbon. So you have one carbon. Di, remember, di is two. Two oxygens. But we should know that carbon dioxide is a CO2, right? So I'm just going to put CO2. And what state was it? It was a gas. So I'm going to put a gas here. And so literally plus, plus water vapor. Water we know is H2O. Vapor is another way of saying gas. So anytime that you see a vapor, it's always in its gaseous form. So in this case, it would be a gas. And voila, we have the molecular equation. However, it needs to be balanced. So always just write the molecular equation and then balance it. Now we've done tons of problems in which we've done balancing with the T. You can totally do that. I'm just going to try to give you guys different ways of balancing. Now this one is a specific method or trick or whatever you want to call it. Because I can tell that this reaction is a combustion reaction. So giving you a little bit more context here. This is a combustion reaction because I see that I have some type of hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is just a fancy way of saying hydrogen with carbon. Hydrogen with carbon. It's a hydrocarbon. But it's always being reacted with oxygen, gas, O2, and you will always yield out these two products, CO2 plus H2O. 
This is the standard form of combustion reactions, where you're adding something with O2 and you get out these two products. So since I spot this out on my equation, I know it's a combustion reaction, so I can balance it in a very quick and easy method. For combustion reactions, you want to kind of like follow a list. The first thing you want to do is you want to balance carbon. So try to work from left to right here. I have four carbons here. I only have one here. So if I want to balance that, I must put a four in front of this molecule because now I will have four carbons and that equals the four on the left side. The next thing you're going to do out of the hydrogen and the oxygen, you're going to balance the hydrogen. Okay, so do carbon first, do hydrogen. You could swap these two out. I don't really care which one you do first, but the object is, is that save oxygen for last. So let's balance the hydrogen. I have 10 hydrogens on the left side. I only have two here. So what number in front of H2, when I multiply, will get me to 10? Five, right? Two times five is 10. So if I just put a five over here, five times two is 10, and now the hydrogens are balanced. The final thing that you're going to do, and maybe I will just like scooch this up a little bit. The final thing you're going to do is now you're going to balance oxygen. This is the most important part. You wanna save oxygen for last. And you're always going to balance oxygen by putting your coefficient, I'll just say C-O-E-F, I think. That's the first couple of letters of coefficient, AKA the big number, right? The big number in front of O2. Mainly because you already put coefficients on these compounds that had oxygen. You don't want to change those coefficients. Whoop. So you're forcing yourself to put a coefficient in front of the O2. So let's tally it up. How many oxygens do I have that's part of CO2? Well, I have four times two, so I have a total of eight oxygens here, plus, plus five times one. So I have five here. So eight plus five is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh gosh. I have 13 um, oxygens on the left side, and I need to put a number over here. However, anything that's being multiplied by two is always gonna give me an even number, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10. It's not gonna give me an odd number like 13. What's the deal? What are we gonna do? The quick way out of this is you can just take this value, 13, and put it over two, because watch what happens. I'm gonna say 13 over two, and what does that mean? 13 over two times two, right? 13 divided by two times two, what happens to the twos? They cancel. You technically only have 13 oxygens now. So if you have this type of problem, just put that number over the two. This is only for combustions, okay? Um, another way out is you could have just did the um, fraction form. I don't really care. So you could do 13 divided by two, and you can say that this number is 6.5. To me, I don't care. Your professor or teacher might care. But either way, 13 over two or 6.5, put that number in front of here. But now, the whole idea is, we cannot have fractions nor decimals in our final answer. We have to do something about that. Now, let me just erase this. Um, so here, always multiply by the whole entire formula by a number, because you have to be fair, to get rid of the two in the denominator here, right? So if the if the two is in the denominator, what number are you going to put here to get rid of the two? 
It's a cancellation method. If you have two in the denominator, you want to multiply by two. That way, when two times 13 over two comes along, because that's what you're doing, right? Two times 13 over two, the twos will cancel. And now you're just left with 13, a whole number in front of your O2. But the whole thing here is that you have to be fair. You have to take this two and put it to everyone in the formula. And you're only going to be changing the coefficients. Remember, you can never change the subscripts. So these numbers stay put. You can only change the big numbers that you actually put in. So instead of having one C4H10, you will have two C4H10s. And you got to include those states, so gas. Plus, 2 times 13 over 2 is just 13. And that gets rid of the problem that we don't, you know, we don't have a fraction anymore. 2 times 4 is 8. So now I have 8 CO2s. And that's a gas. Plus, 2 times 5 is 10. So I have 10 H2Os, and that's a guess. And this will be your final answer. If you leave the 13 over 2, probably your teacher or professor will take away some points. Okay? So just know that, in theory, you should not have any fractions or decimals ever in your balanced full molecular equation. Yeah? Okay. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think. Give this video a like and hit the subscribe button if we deserve your subscription to the channel. Uh, if not, that's okay. Maybe I'll get you on the next one. All right? As always, have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. And I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.